And uh, week zero is one week away. That is a classic college football f- sentence right there. <laughs> <laughs> so just an alert to our listeners. Saturday, you know, week zero is week zero. So let's, we're not going to overdo things, but this is a good antiquing weekend. <laughs> Let's go visit your parents' weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's definitely. get together for coffee with your college friend weekend. Let's go to Austin for a bachelor party weekend. Hell yeah, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if a uh, 108-year-old conference doesn't dissolve this year yeah. while I'm at a bachelor party in Austin. Be careful. Yeah. Conferences have been known to get got when Ross is down there in Austin yeah. having a good time. Yeah, that's right. Last last weekend without football, Dan. I think I saw uh, somebody put this out yesterday. Uh, until the last weekend in January. Yeah, college. Yeah, then you still get the NFL after that. So, our long national nightmare is over. Football is returning now. Week zero. Uh, if you haven't brushed up on the sked, we got Florida State, Georgia Tech in Dublin. That's kicking it off at noon. Uh Next year, isn't it? Who's it next year? LSU versus somebody? LSU's going next year. I think Florida State fan will do very well with the Dublin pubs. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Georgia Tech will step it up. Step it up. We'll see. Uh, then we get the excitement of a national televised game as the only game going at four. Montana State, New Mexico. <laughs> FS1. Remember last, it was New Mexico State, UMass had the had like six, like, I don't know yeah. what. It was the only game. So it's like 5 million people yeah. watch a game. Like, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, we all decided Diego, Diego Pavia was like the greatest player. Yeah. No, no, mm-hmm. the, the UMass quarterback. UMass quarterback. <laughs> UMass won I that see. in New Mexico yeah. State. Diego yeah. became a legend for peeing on the New Mexico logo and then yes. beating him in the game. Oh, yeah. That's yes. right. Yes. All time Las Cruces. The day, the, yeah. the, it's the double dip. It's like winning two Heismans. <laughs> we'll never have to buy another drink again in the town. No, and they they know what they're doing down there. Uh eight o'clock SMU Nevada. Eh. SMU Pat's predicted they're gonna make a yeah. run to the playoff. That's right. Surprise team. 27 and a half point favorites over Nevada. Uh and then for all you late night partiers, Delaware State at Hawaii, midnight Eastern. Degenerative gambler game yeah that's i mean i i don't know which is a more sad and desperate sort of degenerative gambler game degenerate gambler game that one or the four o'clock uh with montana state and new mexico i I don't think this is close uh first off montana state's quality fcs and this game is on something called what is it stet (laughs) Stat. What? What? It's on spec. Spec. Who? I don't know. Is that like hmm. Spectrum TV? Is this just like a you know cable <laughs> thing? My gas station TV joke is getting closer. It is. <laughs> spec. I mean FS1. <laughs> like okay, we know what that is. Spec. Yeah. No. Got yeah, you're gonna there. have to work the bar. You're not gonna get the bar. The bar to change the channel. No. You tell the overwhelmed bartender at midnight, can you get a uh, spec? <laughs> <laughs> Could you change that? Need TV? to see a little Hawaii against Delaware yeah. State. No, that's, that's, that's always fun. No, no, By no. The way, spec uh, 2 plus. I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember, that was just Fox Sports Southwest Plus or whatever. Yeah. We had. <laughs> they wanted to pay Back extra the, to get all your Southwest days. extra yeah. rodeo and rattlesnake roundup coverage. This week, by the left, way, uh, rattlesnake Ross Diego Diego Pavia may never be able to have to buy a drink again in Las Cruces, but he's no longer in Las Cruces. He transferred oh. to Vandy and might be the starting quarterback. Of course, he did. Of course, I can't keep yeah. up where all the players are. I've got my Phil Steele, like like Pat does over there, and I'm reading the Phil Steele, and I'm like, oh, he plays there now. Yep. Yep. Dude's about to get a grad degree from Vanderbilt because he yeah, peed hey. on the logo of New Mexico. <laughs> How American Doing fortunes well are made. <laughs> That's yeah. the American dream. 
Kick that door in. <laughs> Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Um. Anyway, that's coming. So this is the last week. So, I, you know, we've been waiting and waiting. It's almost like it's never going to come. So I thought we would just uh, we would do a little bit of just a basic preview of the season. I don't know, I yeah. mean, like very, very basic stuff, you know, um, and it, and kind of kind of get there. Um, I want to do what the biggest just start with each one of us giving our biggest college football headline of the 2024 season. What is it? Here we are. We're on the cusp. Week zero is coming. You stare into this glorious abyss. What is it that you're most excited about? Pat 40. What is the biggest? Maybe not excited, but what's the biggest? Thank you for giving me the the first overall pick in this because it's fairly obvious. It's like when Trevor Lawrence was getting drafted. I mean, uh, there's you, only one person you're taking first. It was a fairly obvious choice a couple weeks ago when we did a yeah. draft, and you chose Michigan I, USC right. as the biggest game yeah. of the season. I, not the so. big non comp most interesting non conference game was okay. the way uh, that was billed. There is an obvious choice here, Dan, and I wonder if he's about to make it or not make it. Yeah, I, it's I'm I'm on my edge of my seat here. Come on, let's go, Pat. This is like when Diego unzips his pants. I don't know what's going to (laughs) happen. Anything could go down. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Surprise Uh, me. There's this little 12 team playoff thing. Uh, Yeah, he did pick the number one uh, one rated uh, prospect. That was tough. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, we're going to have the the greatest postseason in college football history by far. And I think it's going to lead to the most interesting regular season we've had yes we we lose a couple of things in it one being you know the absolute gravity of every loss um because teams are going to have multiple losses and get into the playoff but i think that there's just going to be so much gained in terms of wider audience of anticipation and optimism and hope that you're getting in the playoff and then the playoff games themselves and i think all the jockeying for positions and as we kind of figure out you know what it's looking like and like oh my gosh we may have Mississippi playing in South Bend in December or we may have you know Penn State going to Tallahassee in December or something you know I just think that the 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 anticipation for this is going to be huge and then I, I expect it to deliver as well I think it's going to be fantastic so to me that's you take the open layup when it is offered thank you yeah you're welcome. Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, because of the playoff and because of this other thing, which is my pick, it is the most, it feels like the most anticipated college football season ever or in our recent history. And the my pick, the other thing is this, is the, the outcome of realignment and the new leagues that we have, the new makeup in the huge matchups. You know, it felt like, guys, Three, maybe four weekends every year throughout the season, there were like kind of dud weekends where you only had, you know, maybe maybe you had a one or two top 25 matchups, but maybe you didn't have any top 10 or any top 15. That That's probably not going to be the case this year because of realignment in the new conferences. You just have bigger matchups. And it seems like every weekend there are two or four or six big brands colliding uh, that are ranked in the top 10, top 20 uh, of the country. Like, you know, just Ohio State visits Oregon, right? Th- things we're not used to of conference games have become conference, uh, will be conference games, Oklahoma, LSU, Michigan, USC. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about uh, those sort of matchups. And, and the other things about realignment too, which, uh, which is like, you know, um, Arizona, you know, in the Big 12, um, Utah in the Big 12 and in those matchups as well. But but the Big 10 and SECs – oh, and Ky- I can't forget Cal, Stanford, and SMU, right? SMU fa- host Florida State uh, in like three or four weeks, I believe. Um, so I'm excited about these new kind of matchups that we're, we're not used to seeing as often that are now conference games. I think this will carry over to next year when UMass joins the MAC. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) A MAC Bowling Green game. Can't wait. (laughs) And Ross brings up an excellent 
truth because people, you know, look, we all get excited for college football and we always remember the, you know, the, the exciting moments overwhelms some of the others. And part of college, the greatness of college football is sitting around watching New Mexico and Montana state. And it, it actually could be a thrilling game. Um, but like it never knowing where it's coming from, but then you got to kind of put in the work, you got to put in the work a little bit and then you get some red river craziness or something like that. But as people would always say, every single week is incredible. I'm like, eh, try host a college football podcast. Cause there are some <laughs> weeks where you're going into that thing going now. It usually something will happen. Cause we just have so many teams, but it's race for the case time. And we're like, there's a big Missouri, Indiana clash rematch of the <laughs> music city bowl two years ago. Uh, that's game three. Um, Conference realignment has huge negatives and not having the Pac-12 and, and some of this stuff is just, it's, it's just not fun. It's not what you want. And we could have accomplished what we have accomplished through a scheduling alliance. Uh, at one point, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten had set up a scheduling deal where they would play, basically everyone would play each other once a year. And you could have set that up properly the way they do like the in basketball. And you'd pretty much get the same thing and we wouldn't have had to call, cause all this tumult. But instead, we've destroyed traditions and ruined certain rivalries and given up a great deal. That said, it's made for TV. The TV execs are doing it. It's hard to stomach. You don't, no one's rooting for the TV networks. But most of us watch, most of us consume the games. All of us consume the games via TV more than anything else because you only really go to one game a, a, a week you, you, at most. Most people go to maybe just their home games. And that, that's, a, that's a hardcore fan that goes to every home game. There's a lot of great TV games. I mean, this is, this is really good. I mean, I, you're looking at these things. Um, what was the one? It was, uh, I know some of the schedules are not as good, but I mean, Michigan is playing Texas, USC, Washington, and Oregon, and then Ohio State. Like, that's five. I mean, you've got, see, Pat, I'm throwing you a bone here. That USC game is pretty cool. Hey, how about that? Whoa, what do you know? Now, four of those. All of a sudden, of it's not the worst pick in the history of any <laughs> It's not number one. I'll tell you that. Jeez, Louise. Michigan's most interesting game is not on September 21st when the Trojans show up. It's November 30th when they go to Columbus. But that's all that's right. It's too, too obvious. Too <laughs> obvious. <laughs> but, like, that's, that's a hell of a schedule. Like, that's a lot of good games besides all the like Michigan State. So like that's that's a lot of big games. And we're getting that because of this. Now, we could have done it a better way. So I agree with uh, with Ross. <sighs> Biggest storyline to me. I'm going to go with this. Um, those are the two obvious, I think. Is there a third obvious I'm missing? Or Not Pat really. I mean, those two kind of those two kind of dwarf everything yeah. else. I'm going to go with. Can you win? Are you going to win the title with a quarterback? He stayed. Or quarterback you brought in. And I look at the top four, five. It's really throughout this, these contenders. Georgia, Texas, keeping their guys. Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, right? Second, third year in the program. These are guys they recruited. Or I guess Quinn Ewers was a transfer, but it was a while ago. Um, Jalen Milrose sitting there at five. Drew Aller is at eight. Michigan's nine. I, I, they're going to have, well, who knows who's going to be their starter, but whatever. I, I don't really see Michigan as a, necessarily going to win the title. Um, but let's just go with those top ones. Or are you Ohio State who says, we're going to plug in Will Howard from Kansas State and we're going to win it? Or Oregon, we're going to plug in Dylan Gabriel and we're going to win it. How do you build a champion at at, through that position in this era. I think that's going to be, I don't think we're going to have a definitive answer in one year, but I think it's going to be going to be interesting. Can you do this with this kind of plug and play guy? Absolutely. No, that I, that I think it's going to be fascinating with some of those, the cup, the two obvious ones you mentioned with Will Howard and Dylan Gabriel in 
teams that are right now national championship caliber. But then even the next level of, uh, you know, Cam Ward at Miami. Uh, shoot, I don't have the, the top DJ DJU at Florida DJU, State. DJU, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Riley Riley Leonard at Notre Dame. Yep. Uh, you know, the, can you can you make the playoff with that first year guy plugging him in there? So it's a good one. Yeah. All right. Also, yeah, that's a good one. You got another one. Audible I want to mention. Yeah, no, you, you get a you're a distant third in this. Yeah. Bronze medal. And there you go. You're still the on bronze. the podium. Qu- oh, I, podium. Total, I podium. I podium. There's a total of three entries. Yeah, there was only here, three so of us. Good job. It Way would take a podium. disqualification for you. Pat, to miss you've the been podium. at a horse race where there are only three three horses end up in it. It's always funny. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, they're like, like everyone's around. I'll bet show. I'll bet you. They don't take that. Yeah. That they're not stupid. That's that's right. <laughs> three horse race. Uh, <laughs> real quick on Ross's point though of like these weeks where you're just and Dan you you meant amplified on it too the the weeks where there's just not much good going on. You know, if you think historically, like week three has oftentimes been a little bit of a soft spot. You get some good openers and then a couple trickle over to the second weeks. This is this is your week three this season. You've got number 21, Arizona at number 18, Kansas State on Friday night. You got Alabama at Wisconsin at noon on Saturday. You have... Bill O'Brien and this may be a sneaky good BC team at Missouri. You have Memphis, which some people think could be the best G5 team at Florida State. Uh, you've got Texas A&M at Florida. You start getting into some SEC games. And I just think every week's going to be like that, where you're going through and you're like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, this. And, oh, there's that one, too, and another one. And I just I think it's going to be week to week going to be you're going to have a harder time making yourself say yes to the apple orchard, I think, this year. Yeah, get get. I'm antiquing. Get it done this week. <laughs> yeah. Next two weeks. Now. We'll grant you. Yeah, get it over with. Week zero. Yeah, you might need to. Think of all the little scenes in those Cialis commercials and then just pick <laughs> one of those. Find a couple tubs up on a hot top of a mountain. <laughs> Biking. And with the big smile that that actor has. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where you're biking like a half a mile great. an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With little baskets in front of your basket. Bike. Yeah. Ah, look at us. go. This is so great. Have a little <laughs> sweater tied around your neck. <laughs> and they're like, well, I got $200 on the Bills game. How's Josh Allen doing? I can't check my phone. <laughs> yep. This is a uh, week where you don't have to worry. Don't have to worry. Get it done. Get it done. I uh, can't say leak leaf rake. It's too early for that one. All right. We'll be back after this message. Let's move to this simple game. We did this on Yahoo Sports. Uh, staff predictions. Conference prediction. Who's going to win it? Let's start in the SEC. It just means more. Ross Dellinger. First pick. We, we, we don't have. We can all pick the same one, by the way. What do you like? SEC. Who wins? It's funny when uh when we did those staff picks, Dan, I was uh going back and forth between Texas and Georgia of winning the SEC and I had Texas and I deleted it and I wrote Georgia and then I deleted it and I wrote Texas and back and forth. I don't remember who I finished with. I, I don't remember you finished who with I ended Georgia. Up picking. Did I? Georgia, okay, glad yeah. you know my own pick, and I don't. Uh, so Georgia, yeah, yeah. So I, I ended up with Georgia, but I was struggling. I was going I was going back and forth between uh, between Texas and Georgia um, because Texas hosts Georgia. You know they get them in Austin, but yeah, I mean in the end, I just picked the uh, the talent of uh, Georgia and the the recent history of Kirby Smart um, and the Bulldogs um, getting to uh, getting to Atlanta and uh, and winning it. Maybe over Texas. Maybe we have a rematch right of that. Uh, that uh, game in Austin in um, I think it's mid or early October. Yeah, I I mean I'm going with Georgia as well. Uh, just I think an extremely solid, well built roster that you look at, and I just don't see much of any flaws or serious problems. They could have one of the you know the top 
probably five players at a nationally at a position at almost every position. And I don't know whether they have just absolute, you know, Heisman Trophy level talent other than Carson Beck, but I don't think it matters when you've got you put twenty two guys on the field that are all extremely good. The caveat there, their SEC road schedule is tough. You're at Kentucky, which they should win. They've beaten Kentucky every year since 2010. I mean, they've beaten them for a long time in a row. But I don't think that's going to be an easy game. Then you turn around, you're at Alabama, and we know the history there. Now, maybe the you take the Saban factor out, and Georgia does not freak out and melt down. But we'll see. they got to show it first. At Texas, as Ross mentioned, and at Mississippi coming off of the cocktail party. So that is... Four tough road games right there, really tough. And if they get past Mississippi, then they're at Tennessee. That three-game stretch is fascinating Tennessee's in Athens. Yes, Tennessee's in Athens. Florida, Jacksonville. Tennessee. Yeah. Florida, Jacksonville, at Mississippi, home Tennessee. You get past that, obviously you're, you're kind of home free with Massachusetts and Georgia Tech. And as a matter of fact, your SEC schedule's over, so you know whether you're in or out of the championship game. But – um. Tough schedule, need to stay healthy, need to not drive recklessly. So I picked Georgia in my little uh on but I'm gonna uh flip flop. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Texas, and that's that's this is why because of the schedule. Georgia is at Bama, at Texas, at Ole Miss, Tennessee at home. I'll take where Texas has got OU neutral, Georgia at home, a, at A and M. Those are how I'd look at the really hard games. That's just a better schedule for Texas. Uh, I am risking uh, my favor Boomer Sooner fan. Who I'm I'm literally in Paris covering the Olympics. My phone rings. I answer it. When is Steve Sarkeesian ever developed a player? Their wide receivers aren't it. I mean, yeah, you know, just because two weeks ago I said something <laughs> nice about. <it. laughs> Looking forward to the call. I know I said something good about the horns. Hook them. Um. I'm a little busy here. This is a friend of yours or just a random dude who got your number? <laughs> I don't know. And sometimes <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's a friend. He's just a little passionate. He's just a little passionate. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's just like, dude, I'm like waiting to talk to Simone Biles. I don't have time for this. <laughs> I, you're, I don't know what they're, I, yes, they're wide receiver depth. I, I know they brought some guys in. Anyway, that's what I'm going with. Big Tell you what. What Texas got two major running back injuries already? Yeah, right? well, both you know? their top two running backs yeah. out, stronger yeah. and backup. Yeah. I'm already regretting uh, my first pick. couple of weeks of camp. They got guys that can run the ball. Uh, see if they can last minute nil in a transfer. <laughs> <laughs> Find somebody. Mm. Yes, <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, Big Ten, uh, Pat, who's winning? I'm going with Ohio State. So, shocker there, I know. Um, Twenty million dollar roster, allegedly, supposedly, and you know, retained maybe eight guys who could have been drafted in the first half, at least maybe higher of the NFL draft brought in Caleb down. So I think is the single best transfer in college football also brought in Quinshawn Judkins from Ole Miss also brought in Will Howard, as we discussed at quarterback there. Uh, and I'm not sure Will Howard has to be great with the running backs and with the receivers that they have offensive lines got to step up a bit. They were pretty good last year they weren't dominant and overpowering they you know if you're if your quarterback and i the will howard may well be significantly better than kyle mccord but even if he isn't i do think they've got so much talent otherwise and that defense should be lights out that i think um ohio state if they don't win it this year as we all know we'll just look for signs of smoke rising from columbus yeah same I, but i was going back and forth on uh on this one too, it's kind of going back and forth between Oregon and Ohio State in a similar situation with Texas and Georgia. Um, Ohio State plays at Oregon, I think midway through the year, October twelfth, uh, and so that had me thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe I should pick the Ducks. Uh, but in the end, went with just like I did with Georgia, went with the team that uh, most recently has had a lot of success and obviously has a lot of talent. Uh, and uh and i yeah I, I agree with pat you know they they had probably the best transfer portal 
haul Ohio State did um, um, of anybody except maybe maybe an Ole Miss or something like that. It was impressive some of the the folks they landed. The big question's going to be at at quarterback, right? And and uh, if uh, Will Howard, um, Kansas State guy, can can uh, get the ball to the right people at the right time, uh, he doesn't need to do a ton, right? Um, I mean, he's got incredible weapons, so just. Distribute the ball, uh, be patient, don't turn the ball over, uh, and you would think the Buckeyes uh, could roll. But the schedule is not simple, um, not just at Oregon, but also at Penn State, um, and then finishes with uh, with Michigan. You got a visit from Iowa there. I'm, uh, I'm going to Ohio State as well. Uh, I just think they're in tremendous position to be really, really good. I don't think this the roster – Stacked. They've got everybody back. Like I said, Caleb Downs. Just they were able to plug in guys in those spots. Um, they remind me a great deal of uh, Michigan last year, and uh, I say that in a good way. Buckeye fans, uh, only only the Buckeye fan could take that as an insult. But uh, I just think that that roster is so solid. And it, it, my thing with Oregon, neither guy's schedule is that difficult. Oregon gets Ohio State visits at there, and they go to Michigan. But this is the part I'm really interested in, to to almost to that that conference realignment part that Ross was talking about. They got this stretch Saturday, December 28th, starting, or actually, we'll just start on the 12th. They go to UCLA, which is not a close trip. Then Jonathan Smith brings back the Michigan State in like a trap game. Yep. Uh, Oregon State coach, I don't. Ask an or ask anyone around Michigan State how's the team going to be? No idea. <laughs> no. I mean, it's like right, we got a whole bunch of new guys. We got a new coach. Like I, I will not. Let's see. Like I'm not sitting there going up oh, three and nine for the Spartans. They could get good, and they had some talent. How much yeah. stayed and all that. Like, but this is a good program, so we'll see. But that's a trap game because the following week here come the Buckeyes. Then this is where it's going to be interesting and in how this West Coast flank works. So they are in Autzen in Eugene. Then they go five days later, they're in West Lafayette. Bang the drum. They're coming <laughs> off that ba- that that big one. Five days later, you're in that's not the, yeah. direct flights. No. I know you charter, no. but you can't can you land a football plane at West? They probably can, I guess. But <laughs> hello. Week later, back home, Illinois. Week later at Michigan. Week later, back home, Maryland. Week later, at Wisconsin. How do the team, a college team, college kids hold, that is, NFL does not have a situation like that. And these kids still, like, they go to school or at least log into something. Eh. I mean, like, there's yeah. a lot. <laughs> they're not yeah, going back to their 14,000 square foot mansions with their private, mas- like, how are you handling that? Like a, you know, you need your sleep. Well, you know, let me tell you what you beat the Buckeyes on the 12th may not be a whole lot of sleep that night. So how do you withstand that? That's what that, that, that would hold me back on Oregon. I think that's going to be a fascinating dynamic to watch for them and all the West coast teams that are doing this uh, extended travel. Um, just uh, do you, can you hold up doing it? multiple times in a period of you know a month or two months or whatever so uh fascinating dynamic and as you said like in the nfl it's not easy in the nfl to travel three time zones but you're not coming back and attempting to be a student you may have to attempt to be a father uh and stuff like that but you're still you're not having to report to a classroom theoretically and sit there and pay attention theoretically and (laughs) you know, perform academic duties. So it's, it is a lot. It is asking a lot for sure. They don't go to class now. They have the online class. Online. Online. Yeah. Yeah. It's still online. Still. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're at like, I don't know, Duke, something like that, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, but anyway. Uh, Stanford, well, Cal, UCLA, USC, yeah. pretty good academic institution. Yeah, that's good. I know Stanford probably is, uh, is up there where you probably don't, uh, I was on the phone with an administrator the other day and he's like, you know, our kids can't, uh, can't do online classes. It's like not allowed. And I just for the life of me cannot remember where 
this was, but it was one of those schools, and that Prestigious makes it school like UMass. I think that's what's holding yeah. us back. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure that was yeah. it. It's about the I'm academic sure. integrity of the degree. Yes, yes, yes. I, I yeah. was doing actually yeah. some research on this, um, in, in a similar way to, to what Pat's talking about about USC or uh, Oregon. USC has something similar uh, from September 21st to October 19th. So less than a month, they go to Michigan, Minnesota, and Maryland. Um, mm-hmm. one completely cross country flight, two that are pretty close. It's a total of 6,700 miles. Um, uh, in, uh, and that's just brutal. USC has yep. spent a lot of time on this because every other year in the middle of their conference season, they go to Notre Dame. Mm. Yeah. And I know I've, I've heard it from Coach O, from Lane Kiffin. I've never talked about it with uh, Lincoln Riley. I never heard him address it, but like, they have a whole plan to get through this because it's so unusual to go three time zones in the middle. And how do you adjust to that? These guys are doing this now every other week, not every other year once. And do you like, all right, you're fired up. You're going like, can you stay fired up if you're going to Minnesota or something that's not as exciting as like, yeah, Notre Dame, it's USC. Notre Dame's a rivalry game and a storied traditional atmosphere, but, yeah. So let's say they beat Ohio State on Saturday, Friday in, <laughs> in West Lafayette. Like what Purdue at night? Like those are that's a great scene. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that Thanks. is trap, trap, trap. So there's a lot of them. All right. ACC. Let's pick it before it dissolves. <laughs> Get your picks Come in. on, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Lo- billable uh, hours will win the ACC yes, this year. Always. Yeah. Mediation. Yeah. Mediation. I pick a mediation to win. There you go. Mediation. Conference but, champion. Uh, mediation. Ross, go ahead. ACC. Uh, Dan, do you remember who I picked? You picked Clemson. <laughs> I, you I picked think Clemson. I picked Clemson to make a, a resurgence with a uh, year two of Garrett Riley's uh, offense and Cade Klubnick at quarterback. Uh, Dabo's got the boys. Uh, w- William Christopher, as Dan likes to say, I think he's got the boys uh, coming back, and, and I think they um, – I think they make a return. Um, I'm, I'm banking on, obviously, an improvement at the quarterback position and the the uh, offense uh, in general in moving the ball uh, a little better. So I'm, I'm thinking that they'll they'll have things uh, right and Dabo will be proved right um, once again. We'll see. They do have a trip, I believe, to Florida State. Don't they? I think they go to Tallahassee. Uh, I want to say I haven't memorized all the schedules, but yes, October 5th at Florida state. Um, and they do go to at, at Virginia tech as well. Um, so with that Florida state game, October 5th, uh, pretty big one. They get NC state as well. I think they're going to be, they're at Pitt. Yeah. All right. Uh, Pat. Um, my picks have been chalky so far, so I'm going completely out of the solar system here. And, and Joe, our producer, is free to clip this to make me look like the biggest idiot on earth come December. SMU going to walk into the ACC and win the sucker. I love the schedule. I love the coach, Rhett, Rhett Lashley. Let's start there. I love the fact that they have a third-year offensive coordinator and a third-year defensive coordinator with Rhett Lashley. So you've got your brain trust that's been together now. He got quarterback Preston Stone, who stayed there, probably had opportunities to go to a lot of places, but why not? They're a Power 4 program now. He had a great season last year. I expect him to do the same this year. Their defense really improved last year. They only gave up 18 points a game, and they've got most of their top guys back on that side of the ball. And the schedule. I like the schedule. They got Florida State in Dallas. When Florida State is coming off a big game the week before, let me see what it is. So I remember noting that. Um, well, no, they're not. They're, they're, they're Florida State's coming off Cal. That's not a big game. But still, you get Florida State to come to Dallas. It's going to be the biggest home game at SMU in who knows how long. Maybe four History, decades. Maybe. Yeah, ever. Maybe, maybe. Um, you don't play Clemson. You don't play Virginia Tech. Your other road trips. Now, you got a kind of a squirrely one to open the season at Nevada. Nevada's been terrible, but don't just, you know, like walk in there at the Reno saying, ah, we got it. But then after yeah. after Florida State, you win that guy, you're if you win that game. You're you're at Louisville, at Stanford, at Duke, at Virginia. 
Louisville could be a tough game there for sure, but I don't think at Stanford, at Duke, and at Virginia are mission impossible. Uh, if they get past Florida State and they're five and zero, and it's a big if, obviously, but if they're five and zero after that, start dreaming big, Pony Express. Value pick. I'm looking online. Yeah. SMU is plus one thousand or plus twelve hundred everywhere I'm seeing. Make the bet, really? Pat. To, to win the, the ACC, ACC or? to win the yeah. ACC. Uh, looks like the Florida State's about plus. 300, 250. Obviously, there's like 10 sports books. I'm here looking. Uh, Clemson's in the 300s. Miami's in the 400s. NC State is in the 600s. And then you get to SMU and Va Tech in about 1,000. And really, for most places, Louisville is ahead of both of those. Yeah. Um. So I'm not saying what you should do with your money other than buy copies of Epic Athletes. With a local <laughs> young reader in your life, we have Simone Biles, we have uh, Steph Curry, a lot of Olympic heroes. But mm-hmm. if you want to do something else with your money, um, you know, Pat is speaking. Pat is spoken. There you go. Uh, I'm taking the U, and I know we just went through this, and no one picked Florida State. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> FSU Twitter finds out about this. Oh, I'm, I'm almost willing to pick FSU just to avoid the, the arsenal of hate that came in. Look at what do you want us to? Do? <laughs> No of respect. course, a bunch of know-nothing idiots like you would I, I thought you should have been in the playoff. I mean, what, I had that going yeah. for me. Now I hate you. I think I, this is a daring pick. I am aware who the coach is. But Cam Ward is really good. And they got a Uh-oh. ton of talent. What? He's going to do it, Pat. Miami Hurricanes go are going to win this. It's gonna They're going to win the ACC. And I'll tell you why. This is their ACC schedule. A lot of home, baby. Vatek, home. And you get you walk into Miami Gardens. I mean, that is quite an environment. <laughs> They're at Louisville. FSU, home. Duke, home. At Georgia Tech. Wake Forest, home. At Syracuse. That's the schedule. That's not bad. They avoid Clemson. They vo- they're not. They're not. They get. They. It's a terrific schedule. And it is a uh, a loaded roster, and they have invested significantly. And if Mario Cristobal, I'm not saying he has to win the ACC, but he better come close. He better come yeah. close. So yeah, big. That's first a guy game. who needs a good big year. first game. Big first game up in Florida, big, big, but that will big. not impact the ACC standing. So no, it will not. It will impact the uh, the temperature of uh, the Miami fan base uh, in some uh, way. It will. That's. You know, I was I was just thinking, like, if by some miracle chance SMU happens to win, could you imagine a top four seeded SMU that a year ago was playing in the American Athletic Conference Championship game and hoping to get the last uh, BCS so bowl or, or group of so whatever bowl six spot? I mean, it would be unbelievable. Paul, what in the predictor. damn nation is going on with this playoff? <laughs> How the tide uh, behind SMU? <laughs> uh, it could it's happen. Fun. It could happen. All right. The drunken, wild, and woolly in our favorite Big 12. Backyard brawls. Big backyard. Yeah. Big backyard. Uh, is it Pat's turn? Yes, it's Pat's turn. Yes. Go ahead. Pick a yeah. team, any team. Now, <laughs> honestly. Give me uh, one of the top say five but i'll i'll take utah um total believer in kyle whittingham in terms of putting out a really solid team year in and year out and cam rising who you know didn't play last year but is a just a very good quarterback a great leader he's like stetson bennett's age now he's like 25 or whatever been around since the earth cooled um i love the having having him there and their defense, you know, is going to be good because it's a Utah Kyle Whittingham, Morgan Scally defense. The you know the competition: K State, Oklahoma State, Arizona, Kansas, Iowa State, maybe even who knows? It's going to be a absolute week to week brawl. Their uh, schedule is super interesting pretty early on, 
You got at Oklahoma State September 21st. Then you host Arizona September 28th. We might have a real good read on where that race is going by then. They also they have Baylor September 7th, so they will have played three league games in the first five and probably given us a good window into what the heck uh, that league's going to be about and what Utah is going to be about, but I think Utah is going to be about winning. Dan, I uh, I, oh, I you went, need a refresher. I, no, no, I I remember who I picked eventually, but I, I think at first I wrote in Arizona and then changed it to Utah, and then changed it finally to Oklahoma State. So that was my final, yeah, my final selection was uh, the Cowboys to to win the Big Twelve. But uh, like Pat mentioned, I mean, you could kind of take any of the top four to five, maybe even down the line to six to like a. Uh, a Kansas um, that could that could win that league, and, and that's why uh, I think it is going to be um, week to week the most parity and, and most fun um, that we'll see. But yeah, I got the Cowboys. Uh, they return all but like a couple of starters uh, from the team. I, I think maybe they lead the nation or are really close in returning players. Um, and uh, I trust uh, Mike Gundy, who's now. 52, 53, something like that. Um, and despite his, um, his uh, what he said at Big 12 Media Day about drinking beers and driving, um, I think that... But God, is he that old? Wow. He just looks good. He's just good. Yeah, well, I, I remember the days when he was 40. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. He's a man. man. He's 40. That was 17 years ago. That's crazy. Time flies when you're, when you're having like a fun. day over 54. Wow. Um... <laughs> I would I would quantify or qualify the he looks good with he's got to stop with the two tone beard and jet <laughs> two-tone black two tone beard with the mullet that is bringing uh, no, sexy back man no come man, on no, don't no. don't ever question what Gundy's up to <laughs> yeah they do looks wise uh, at least this one of the things that helps him in the schedule um, they miss they miss uh, Utah on the schedule and they miss Arizona too uh, but they do they do have to go. They have a quite a stretch from uh, a three week stretch where they they go three road games in a four a four week stretch. BY at BYU at Baylor and at TCU, and they do have to play at the Little Apple, uh, so that could be a toughie. And week two will know a lot about a lot, right? They host Arkansas uh, in week two, but uh, give me the Pokes to uh, win win the uh, win the Big Twelve. Yeah, I would extend that list to like man. I, like Iowa State, you see, I don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be a lot of fun. I am going to take Kansas State. I think they are actually incredibly well coached team. They continue to get stronger all over their roster. Yes, they lost Will Howard, but there is not a lot of panic in Manhattan over the loss of Will Howard because everyone's excited about Avery Johnson. And I look, you get a returning Pop Tart Bowl MVP on your team, you should be excited. <laughs> No, the, he started a couple games last year. Uh, he can run. He can pass. He fits that offense perfectly. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement there. And then you get into the schedule in a conference race. Arizona in Manhattan. Oklahoma State in Manhattan. Kansas in Manhattan. They avoid Utah. They, they're at Iowa State. They're at Houston. They're at BYU. But, like, not – this is not killer. At, at WVU, ride the train, but uh, they're at Colorado, which who knows. Um, but I, I think Kansas State can do this. I don't think anyone's making it through this league unblemished. Um, and there's just a lot of excitement there. Every man a wildcat taking the title. Yeah, I mean, I I cannot knock a K-State pick. That's another t- – Kyle Whittingham, Chris Clamon both can build a solid program. Um, never count on them to – like, you know, let it fall apart really on their watch. So uh, I do need to make one note here. The Utah-Baylor game counts as a non-conference game uh, because of the schedule they were throwing together early. So uh, for Utah-Baylor, September 7th. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, well, I was sitting here looking like, where's Utah's other non-conference game? There's only two. And so I looked it up, and yeah, sure enough, uh, that's a non-con game. The the ACC did that at some point, or it still does that maybe. Like Wake and like Wake North Forest Carolina North played Carolina. In some, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. a non conference game, conference foes. Like I, I, what are we doing? But anyway, moving on. 
All right, hold it there. We'll be back right after this. This week in money. <laughs> mm. yeah. Okay. Tennessee Vols. Tennessee mm-hmm. Volunteers oh, yeah. have uh, inked a sponsorship deal with Pilot Flying J, the, the truck stops, travel centers, 750 of them around the country. I have frequented, I'd say, 623. <laughs> <laughs> Always there for you. Pilot J with Flying mediocre J, coffee, yeah. a taquito on a on a roller, <laughs> sometime clean bathroom. So Pilot J is actually not bad. That's good. It's a good spot. We we. We way back in the radio days discussed their coffee. I remember. Yeah, I think, I think. Yeah, no, their coffee. It's improved. It's improved dramatically. Okay. Pilot yeah. J. Listen, when you're going along on one of those lonely interstates and you see the Pilot J thing, you're you're pretty confident you're gonna you know get something good. Something good's gonna happen in there. Um, <laughs> so they were sponsoring the Neyland Stadium renovation project. Uh. Pa- uh, Ross, how much is a twenty-year deal? Are the is the money not detailed? Uh, no, the money is the money is not detailed. I, I think that um, probably Tennessee didn't mind um, telling what the the money is, but uh, releasing it. But I think Pilot uh, would uh, would rather keep their financial. Uh, sounds like uh, nil. Oh, let's have we need guardrails. We need an nil yeah. clearinghouse. How much is yeah? Mm-hmm. But if you speak to folks. In the endorsement brand world, um, they had originally told me over the summer, like when the NCAA basically lifted the rules to uh, allow schools to do this, put logos on the field and and all that stuff on the stadium, even though they don't have naming rights. Um, You know, when you talk to people, it uh, it fetched some serious cash uh, in the uh, in the in the eight eight figure. Right, eight figure world. So I, I I assume we're looking at a deal worth ten plus million dollars a year. And again, that's just an assumption. And in a world of revenue sharing and a three hundred million dollar renovation to Nayland, it's it's very important. Uh that money is, is certainly very important. And again, we'll we'll continue to see it happen. I you know, this is this was framed to me as a um stadium naming rights deal where the name doesn't change. And, and to me, um, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> it took a while for me to understand that. Well, how can you call it a naming rights deal if the name stays the same? But it is to me, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a sponsorship deal where the, where the, where the uh, logos um, will be throughout, uh, throughout Neyland Stadium um, and uh, worth a lot of money. Yeah. On the field too, right? On the field, yeah, yeah. on the press the box, on the uh, yeah. and uh, you know, as they, as they, I think the slogan is uh, Nayland Stadium preserved by Pilot," which I think is a, was, a that's Stadium, a good way to home of the good balls, way to put it. So, proudly yeah. preserved by Pilot. Proudly now, preserved. Pilot's Pilot. chairman is Jimmy Haslam, who uh, mm-hmm. also owns I think, the Browns, mm-hmm. and he owns a bunch of teams. Right? He's a little bit of a Tennessee. Teams. Booster, uh, yeah, I he went believe. to more than a little bit, not a little, yeah, a little, yeah. Uh, he's being a major booster, yes, yeah, major booster. He owns yes. the, uh, yes, part of the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, the Columbus Crew, uh, of MLS and the Cleveland Browns. He's been a huge, uh, te- he's a huge Tennessee booster. Uh, listen, I think it's a great deal. I, just, I mean, I, it does not bother me one bit that there is a pilot logo on the. It's not like they took away the checkerboard end zones. Uh, Neyland Stadium's one of my favorite places in college football. It's it's one of the best environments you'll ever go to. I always say Knoxville is you're looking for a a, a weekend to go to a game. You can do you can't do much better. I don't know. You can do better than Knoxville because it's like a real city and and the stadium's incredible. You can fly in there and have a fun time. You don't you're not just like crowded into some college bar where you feel really old, even if you're like 29. Um, and uh, I think it's this. If this is it, great. I think great job by Tennessee. You need to rent. You always need to renovate stadiums. And uh, if this cuts the cost on the students or anything else, then even better. Like I 100 percent in favor of this. I think it's a good deal for Tennessee. And yeah, we're going to see a whole bunch of them. Like we said, places like Tennessee, they're going to get like pilot. Like they're going to get big businesses. It's the fun part. It's going to be 
not Tennessee, <laughs> we could tell who's who's sponsoring right. some of the lower ones, right? I, I think it's a home run the way they've pulled it off, um, and probably helps that Jimmy Haslam loves Tennessee, so he's not going to say, "I need." pilot's name on the stadium he's gonna say no we need that needs to be nayland stadium so keeping that i think is fantastic and then yes putting the logo on the field who cares um if you're adding if it's 10 million a year you're halfway to the rev share baby i mean that's that's a huge leg up on the annual ticket roughly what it will be to to pay your players so i i think it's great deal i i yes i i wish every school had a jimmy haslam who would want to kick in that much money in a non-obtrusive, you know, non-like tradition-killing kind of way, but that's not going to happen. What my question then becomes, obviously, in this new revenue-sharing world that we're about to get into, remember, all outside third-party NIL don't count against the cap. So schools, especially many in the SEC, are trying to figure out ways already, right, how they can maybe circumvent the cap through outside NIL that uh, that won't count. Um, and Tennessee is one of those places that has a collective that, that has done just about as well as any collective, I think, in the country. Uh, and you wonder if a brand like Pilot might be involved, you know, in these big brands like Nike with Oregon might be involved in the revenue sharing and allowing a school to expand upon its cap. That is going to be fascinating of course all these deals have to go through a clearinghouse that allegedly ha is going to have teeth and uh, going to kick out deals that are pay for play but um we'll see so will the clearinghouse know how much pilot paid yeah <laughs> yes they will they're supposed to all deals with athletes that are outside the school must go through the clearinghouse before the athlete takes a dime i'm intrigued at because so uh, i looked it up pilot j is owned by berkshire hathaway so it's not, it's not traded, I guess, I guess it's through, like, it's like, what would a public company, would they not make this deal? Cause they don't want this information out. I like, guess it's, it's gonna be some interesting, like side stuff, or maybe it's not that interesting, you know, how, just, just how would this all, all this play out? I, I do say this about pilot. And this is, I think G, to Pat's point, Jimmy Haslam understands general Neeland, <laughs> you don't mess with the name of the stadium. And I'm, interested in i think a business would be very very dumb to mess with the names of most of these stadiums you don't change right. ohio stadium's name <laughs> you do not that change be... bryant denny stadium no. nick saban field you do not change like these you know what you, you can you could throw ben griffith off the name no one's gonna everyone calls it the swamp like you're not changing notre dame stadium because if you let's say you got that deal and you said boy this is going to be worth 10 gazillion dollars like every tennessee fan will be like i ain't going to pilot j yeah no, like would... you changed you insulted general neyland that's not like the, the you got to tread cautiously on this now yes. maybe some places can get away with it but other people are just going to be like no 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 on the name of our stadium is the name of our stadium and uh, especially for a school that's got money, like I just think, mm -hmm. like a, a an Ohio State, an Alabama, a Notre Dame, a Michigan, a USC. Like they're, I don't even know if you could what do you rename the L.A. Coliseum. Like I don't even know if it's possible. But, <laughs> Please uh, don't. Yeah, Please but don't. I don't even think it would work. Um, but right. like I think there, you have to tread lightly on how much you are going to, because you leave it up to the marketers, right? They'll slap up, they'll, they'll NASCAR. It. Oh yeah. For but sure. the fans will reject, and if those are the customers you're trying to reach, this isn't working. Yeah, like even to a smaller degree, like a Kinnick Stadium in Iowa. Don't, no, no, do right. not mess with now Kinnick's name on that stadium. And you know, there's places where the name resonates and means a lot to the people that have bought the tickets there for 50 years. Piggybacking off of that a little bit is the on the field logos and the fact you know schools now can change their midfield logo and how many schools we talked about this back in may i think but how many schools will really change their midfield logo could you could you imagine lsu taking out the tiger eye in the middle of their field um uh texas taking out the long the longhorn in the middle of their field and replacing it with a corporate logo there's plenty of places that probably won't 
do that or, or even can't do that because of the backlash um, that they will receive. But I don't know. There's probably quite a bit of places who who would. And, and when you talk to brand folks in the industry, like uh, one used Alabama, which I don't expect Alabama to, to replace the script A in the midfield. But if they were to, you're also talking about, I think, an eight figure, uh, an eight figure a year check um, for, for the midfield uh, logo. Now, we'll see plenty of uh, what Tennessee's doing with Pilot, right, with the logos of the 25-yard line, which probably fetches not as um, big of a price, but uh, you still you still preserve a little bit uh, of the uh, of the tradition there with the the midfield historic midfield logo. Pro sports they build new stadiums all the time, right? And so you can you can rename them, you can rebrand, like even like Staples Center becomes Crypto Like okay. Um, you, but is college football is more like baseball, like at least with some of these, like you can't, you can't take the naming rights of Wrigley field or Fenway or even the new Yankee stadium. Like it's Dodger stadium. Like they're just iconic. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right. Let's wrap with this. Got a lawsuit. Uh, have you heard of the museum of ice cream? Yes. It was in yes, Hard Knocks last night, too, or this week with the Chicago Bears. The Museum of Ice Cream has uh, four locations around the country, and you can go yeah. and learn about the history of ice cream. And, and you can eat ice cream. You can eat ice cream. It's for little kids. It's a, it's, I mean, you say, we're going to go to the museum, and the kid, every kid goes, ugh, and they go to the Museum of Ice Cream, and they get excited. Anyway, at the Museum of Ice Cream, they have a thing that's kind of like a ball pit at McDonald's. And it's the sprinkle pit. It's called the sprinkle <laughs> pool. And the kids can jump in the sprinkle pool is, is how it is. Well, uh, plaintiff Jeremy Shore filed a lawsuit Wednesday in Manhattan. Uh, I think there's two in New York, but there's at least one. And there's one in Chicago. Uh, he visited the museum's location in Soho with his daughter on March 31st, 2023, and he suffered severe and permanent personal injuries when he jumped into the sprinkle pool. <laughs> you get sprinkles the up lost... his nose? Like, what happened here? Well, well, wait, wait. Uh, let me read through this. I think he broke an ankle, but maybe not. Uh, he, he says it encourages patrons to jump in the pink sprinkle pool through its advertising and promotional materials, quote, creating the reasonable but false expectation that the sprinkle pool is fit and safe for that activity. It says ready to jump in. Uh, he said uh, jumping in left him with injuries required surgery and may require future surgeries as well as physical therapy and diagnostic testing. He's seeking unspecified damages. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Oh, he broke his ankle. I'm sorry. He broke his ankle. Okay. He did. Yeah. Um, just in sprinkles. In, in, well, he got through the sprinkles, I guess, and hit the bottom. And hit the bottom. Yeah. Oh. Should you just be able to just, you know, Greg Luganus the dive <laughs> into the sprinkle pool and expect safety. It, 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 who is wrong? Who is in the right here? Customer or the Museum of Ice Cream in Soho? I stand with the customer here. Uh, like, if you can't trust your sprinkle pool, what can you trust yeah. in America? America? You know, yeah. you, you, you got to be able to count on the sprinkle pool to be deep enough and cushioned enough. That you can jump in whatever your, you know, lard ass weight may be, and you're gonna be okay. You're not gonna break anything on the bottom. And uh, personally, I, I think I would probably go in, like jump in in a sitting formation or even jump in on your back yeah. or something, as opposed to like straight feet first. Yeah. <laughs> but unless there's a sign idiot. up there saying don't go head first and don't go feet first, then go the way you wanna go. And if that breaks your ankle, then that's on the Museum of Ice Cream, I will mm. say. I, no. I'm siding with the customer here. Uh, Sue them for all they got. Get every sprinkles, <laughs> dime worth of sprinkle money. They settled for a lifetime supply of chocolate chip. Like, what do we, what do we <laughs> do? Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Jump, jump, jump to the side. Land differently. What are you doing jumping in the... Uh, how deep was this? Did we find out how deep it was, Dan? The There's story a picture said how and they're like ankle deep in this thing. And then there was one last night in, on the Chicago Bears. 
are doing Hand hard knocks deep. and somebody took their kids to the thing and that looked a little deeper. It looked more like a ball mm. pit. So mm. I, I don't know which which one is the I, I don't know. We need more info on this, but mm. it's yeah. not twelve a, feet deep. That's a lot of sprinkle. A trustworthy sprinkle pit. I mean, what are mm. we doing? Trustworthy. I, mm. Ross, you're not making an opinion on this. I, I blame. No, I, I, I side with, uh, with the uh, museum, the ice cream folks. Yeah, yeah me the, too. The, me too. Museum, First yeah. off, come on, man. It's a, it's you do. How many? Have you seen an adult jumping into the ball pit at McDonald's? You'll break your <laughs> ankle there too. You have to be like, why are you in the ball pit? This is for kids. There's nothing saying you can't. It's a free country. <laughs> McDonald's will let an adult go in the ball pit. Well, they can't discriminate because someone will sue them for that. Mm, yeah. That's true. yeah. So don't. So make a safe ball damned pit for do, big fat people should, to jump no, in. Too. Do, like, like you go to you go to the amusement park and sometimes it's like this is for kids. You can't be this, you know how they you can't you gotta be this tall. Other times they're like, you can't be that. You can't have like this you can't have like uh, Victor Wembeana on the on the on the swinging <laughs> strawberries. Okay, it was, it, the, the whole thing would teeter. <laughs> I, I'm going to assume this guy is not seven foot four. I don't know. Uh, I don't know I what mean, this Wemby's guy a, is. Also, a little bit like, of an outlier. I mean, it's the mus- I, no. Just stay out I'm of the dismayed. damn ball pit. It's the oh. pool, you. I'm Come dismayed on. at you all sticking up for big ice cream. Big ice cream is up. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like a multi. It's a multi-state conglomerate. I we Brooke and I tried to go to the one in San Francisco like three years ago. It was sold out. The thing was huge. So. Well, I mean, Brooke is a. This would be the opinion I'd want. She's an excellent swimmer, obviously yeah. silver medalist. I would like her opinion on the state of the ice cream pool, Museum I'm, of Ice Cream Pool. I want to know what Brooke Forty thinks because that would be an expert opinion. Okay, I'll get it from her. And I'm Thank you. It back we'll, we will update show. this Let's story at a later see. date. We had a yeah. shallow pool in in uh, uh, Paris. We got a shallow uh, sprinkle pool in New York. Probably. Yeah, what was it? There were too many waves in Paris. Yeah, yeah, they built too too shallow a pool. They should have made them swim were... that river, man. Oh, people are still coming out of the hospital from that. It's so funny. Not funny, but no, not well, funny for yeah. them. But no, what the hell were you guys thinking? We'd like to have the swimming in the Parisian sewer system. <laughs> Paris did a lot of good things, but that was not it. That, no, that was that was a big People got sick. Oh hell yeah! Oh uh, yeah, several of the of the marathon swimmers got sick. Yeah. So I don't know if you followed this thing, Ross. So they've been wanting they have banned public swimming in the scene. Sen. Right? Sen, 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 whatever. Sen. I was only I lived I lived like two blocks from it for three weeks. The Sen, <laughs> they banned it for one hundred the last one hundred years. You're not allowed to swim in that river. A hundred years. A hundred wow. years. But then all of a sudden, coincidentally, yeah. on like the third day, the Olympics go, oh, it's okay now. <laughs> and they had to delay it one day. They're like, not good today. Yeah, today I good. That. I remember saying It's that. not like yeah. when they sometimes close a beach because something like there's some bacteria or it's like oil or, you know, whatever. They close it for like two days. Yeah, but you swam there all the other days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I-, I saw the delay. I didn't see the aftermath of people actually getting sick. Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, they swam in the sewer. Wow. Yeah. Not a good no, thing. There was, quote from there, they did the triathletes first and then the marathon swimmers later. But one of the triathletes said, I saw and felt things under the bridge that you should never saw and feel. Oh, oh like, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Stay out of the pit. <laughs> Fix the ball pit. The Museum of Ice Cream Sprinkle Pit. Feel good. All right. That's our show. We'll be back uh, next week. Week zero is upon us. Holy crap. Woo! Go college football. Thanks for subscribing, listening to us, sharing on social media, telling your friends about us. Membership drive. We'll start the real membership drive next week. We need some of you guys to put in some work. We love you, though. We love you. Talk to you later.